Morning all. I've found a sweet little game uh, and this game was featured in the ChessGames.com game collection. I won't tell you yet the name of the collection because it would kind of be a spoiler. Uh, it was played in Bulgaria 1962. The player with white, basically this is the only game he's got at ChessGames.com, Yuri uh, Troinov. His opponent, Lubin Popov, is more well known. He's still around, 80 years old, Bulgarian. He was born in uh, Plovdiv, awarded the IM title in 1965, so no bunny. He was the Bulgarian champion in 1970. So pretty strong player with black, you know, pretty established player. E4 from Troinov. Uh, we have, let's turn this off for a moment. We have the Sicilian defense, knight f3, knight c6, pretty standard stuff so far. Knight f6, knight c3, d6. We have that Scheveningen pawn formation in the center. Castles, bishop e7, bishop drops back. Black castles, looks pretty standard so far. Bishop e3, a6, f4. Now black reacted here, kind of transposing it to a French defense pawn structure. Black played d5, which seems quite logical in many respects because one of this bishop for example on b3 isn't it a bit hemmed in white plays e5 knight d7 now we have a very aggressive looking move played in this position queen h5 and it seems to be the main idea either to provoke weaknesses like g6 because then there'll be dark square weaknesses or perhaps bring the rook round to h7 now black may have been concerned about this rook lift and plays what seems to be a normal looking move rook e8 it gives the knight f8 but uh, there's a shocking move played in this position uh, a really quite a shocking idea behind it as well so sometimes in chess we're a few steps away from what seems to be quite magical moves and this is a great example of such a case. Uh, <laughs> so white play in this position. If I give you five seconds to pause the video, what would you play uh, here starting from now? So five seconds to pause the video. Okay, knight takes d5. Very interesting. You might wonder what on earth is this about? It does seem to be liberating that bishop. That's a good positional principle to try and liberate your pieces when you do an attack. <laughs> As mentioned not, not so long ago on the channel. So the bishop's definitely getting liberated. But what here do you play? If I give you five seconds now, this is interesting. Very, very interesting move. So what would you play here? Five seconds starting from now. Okay. Not bishop takes d5, I can tell you that. Because <laughs> this isn't so good, it doesn't really threaten much. And actually knight d takes e5, hits the bishop, protects f7, and actually would spell disaster for white if this is the main continuation. Then black's just winning here. No, white's got to play slightly differently <laughs> to bishop takes d5. Five seconds again. I hope you see it. Remember, sometimes when you look at forcing moves, you look at even the most outrageous ones because they might actually do something in the very specific position that you have. Okay, it's queen takes f7. Yep. A queen sack. There's a few things to look at here actually as well as just taking the queen there's a king move uh, for example. Let's add a bit sir. <clears throat> On the king move knight e6 hits the queen and g7 so that's no good. Black would have to give up the queen. So basically uh, black in the light of knight e6 he takes that we have bishop takes d5 and there's a few options for black 
well when I say a few there's actually two options for black not that many actually two it's either going to f8 or going to g6 nothing can be placed in between if we go to f8 knight e6 wins the queen again with check and here white is better if we reach this position white is winning again big advantage so the king marches to g6 but alas now look at this f5 check this is a king chase bishop f3 check g3 check bishop g2 check rook f4 check now is played and black resigned his king is actually definitely in a mating net here on king h5 there's two ways to mate in two one is check here and bishop f3 is checkmate look at the two bishops working very well together and that pawn stops g6 so that's a checkmate and there's also bishop f3 and this double check facility here so there's no way of putting anything in between both of those double checks that's double check and mate but um, if the king goes to g5 then it's even quicker rook h4 checkmate <laughs> so basically uh yeah this this is all over after rook f4 it's not the most rocket science complicated game ever but it does show that actually uh the magic of forcing moves is sometimes only a you know one or two steps away and what can be just seen as the prelude to some slower movements are actually the prelude to some dramatic moves instead so i hope you enjoyed this game comments questions likes appreciated thanks very much